I'm gonna design exoskeletons today. Before that, I'm gonna buy a mic. All right, so I thought this would be fast, but of course it's not. So this right here is a flash mount, and I'm looking at trying to get this Rode mic right here, but it has something called a hot shoe mount. And so this is 60 bucks, and then I'd have to get another $20 part on top to be a mount between these. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is try to try to 3D print um, a mount in between these just to save a couple bucks since I'm so poor right now. Um, I got this in here. This is a converter from the three, prong, the three prong there. So you can see three individual pieces of metal to the two. And then that actually got audio to go through and record to the camera, which I wasn't able to do yesterday. I tried. Um, the problem is it's only recording audio on one side, just on the left side, not on the right side. I have no idea why that is. I don't know if it's the problem with the camera and how it's set up, or if it's a problem with this. If it's a problem with this, that thing should fix it. If it's a problem with this, I'm gonna have to return that and figure out something else to do with audio for this. I really hope I can get this thing working because I really want to use this to do my video for, I want this to be my main shooter for my vlog. So I don't know, we'll see what I can do. I gotta go to work, so. I bought it, um, I'm eating lunch, I'm about to go work. Bought the mic, um, not buying the, uh, the mount thing, I'll figure that out. First I just wanna plug the mic in and see if I can get it to work. So I'm having all kinds of issues with my lavalier mic, I don't know if that's because of the, I don't know if that's the mic's fault or the camera's fault. So we're gonna get the mic, we're gonna test it out, see if it works. Um, if not, I might buy a little miniature thing for recording audio. The problem is that if I do that, um, like a voice recorder, a digital voice recorder, the problem if I do that, then I have to go and I have to add all the audio in. It's not synced to the, the video already, which is a pain in the ass. I don't want to do that. I'd much rather it just, because I like to edit fast because I have other things I'm working on. Uh, anyway, um, it'll be here in a couple days because it's Amazon Prime. Um, we'll try it out. If it doesn't work, we'll figure it out from there. But we're going to give it a try. Going to go to work soon. All right, I just got off work here and I wanted to show you guys something. I have, um, if you look here, you have the deep frame and the superficial frame right there and they will bolt together on the same um, joint right there to keep the size down. And then on the outside, there's gonna be um, another one of these on the outside. So more like how I've been traditionally doing it. So another joint here, but they will kind of come together in one joint here. But anyway, um, one thing that I thought was gonna work really well that didn't, want to work is um, this ring right here was going to be a full ring that was going to rotate all the way around, but look how big it is. It's just far too large. I mean, that is just a little too much to be putting on your arm. So, you know, I think these things through and then I start working on them and sometimes they don't work out. So I think I'm going to do, instead of doing a full ring, which was my plan, I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do a half ring like this right here with this kind of slider, just another one on top of it. Um, right up here, just another one like that for the uh, superficial frame and get rid of this idea because this will put too much bulk down near the inside of the body, which is where we want to keep bulk down. I'm working on right now, not sure how I feel about it. I don't really like this top one. It's just, it's very strong. It's a stronger way of doing it. So I want to use it in the uh, superficial, but I want to use something a little bit more compact up here because this is almost two inches and that's really quite a bit sticking out of off of your shoulder because then you have another about another inch or a little bit under an inch about 0.7 margin below that so you're looking at like well it's like 2.4 here and then 1.7 uh, there so like almost three and a half inches that's a lot to stick out of your arm so I, I want this to be more compact i really want this to be some way of being one piece and then another piece riding on top of it the problem with that though is that it can you can't hook underneath and grab because it'll run into that so i don't know all righty guys let's talk about the arm the arm is done remember the arm is your upper arm in anatomy it is called your arm so i use anatomical terms so when I say arm, I am not talking about all of this, or, or sorry, about all of this right here. I am talking about this. So I'll have the 
transverse plane working in here, and then I also have uh, the frontal plane because what I said earlier, I didn't get this thing properly aligned first because I didn't draw in a uh, skeleton. Um, so you can do three-dimensional sketches in Fusion 360. I don't use them very often, but I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna set up the frontal, sagittal, and transverse planes. This is the for draft two at the very before I do any any part of building the exoskeleton. I am gonna build up the sagittal plane frontal plane and transverse plane. That'll be this first part. The frontal plane and the sagittal plane. Um, the frontal plane and the sagittal plane, excuse me. Frontal plane, sagittal plane. For those two planes, you want to get them um, as even as possible down, right down the barrel of this, of me. Just like that. Um, transverse plane, it doesn't matter as much. It just, um, intersects the body at some point. There might, I'll look up, I'll look it up before I do it, but there might be a specific spot it's supposed to intersect. Um, so I might do it just to be able to relate to anatomy textbooks. But um, anyway, uh, I didn't get that right. So there is a little bit of this motion on the uh, frontal plane on it. Um, but that is, um, that normally wouldn't be there because um, this would I would just kept fixed if I had ideally gotten it in the right spot. Um, like I said, building in the three-dimensional. So when I go in, I build the 3D skeleton in, I'll put a curve for the spine, and then I'll put uh, straight lines that come out for the um, for the clavicle and for the humerus and for this, and then those essentially be axes of rotation too, and I'll be able to use them that way. Um, so they'll be you know, like the humerus will be on the axis of rotation. There'll be another one coming this way on the axis of rotation for the arm right here. Um, same thing for the legs. Um, the neck will just be a fixed line. They'll all be fixed lines, but then I'll be able to reference them in all of my other sketches so that I have the, the base built out first. And then I won't have to guess on this shit and get it wrong like I did today. Anyway, let's talk about this. Um, so again, the, again, this would probably never be able to go onto a human. Uh, there's so many problems with this exoskeleton, but it's a good exercise. So this right here is the motion of internal and external rotation. That's going like this with your arm. And then you can go out and you can go like this. Um, and then this motion would be your wrist, and then this would be internal and external rotation. But generally, where you what you think of it is going towards your body or away from your body, towards your body or away from your body. That's kind of generally what you think about when you talk about this. So that is that right there. So um, if you see with the body on here, uh, it goes like that. So there you can see here, this is your superficial, this is your deep. Um, they bolt together, this track bolts together right there and right there, and then uh, right there and right there. Um, and then it also bolts together right up here. And then um, you'll see that these two, there's two of them, and then there's gonna be another one that goes off the top and then it's coming out in the middle right now, which is probably not how I'll actually do it, but these two parts would come down to the forearm. But you'll notice there's just one over here. So in order to keep it smaller, I talked about this earlier, but this right here is the superficial frame and then the deep frame and they're just on one. Um, so it'll be less space for stuff to run through there, but it keeps it nice and compact where it's gonna be up against your body. That's what we want. Um, so next I need to go through and I need to do the forearm. Um, and I will probably end up doing the hand as well. Um, so I'll do the, the forearm, the hand, and then after that, we have the hip joint. So these are files, so each of these are files. So this right here is arm attempt one. So um, like I said, I think there's 14-ish files, uh, total files for this, um, and then for this draft, and then what I end up probably gonna do on the last draft or the next draft um, is try to do the torso as one solid piece, the leg is one solid piece and the arm is one solid piece because it gets hard to reference these photo these sketches back to each other if you have to change something upstream it makes it easier you can change downstream if you do it this way where you break it up you have to it breaks the history this is the history bar in fusion 360 so you can if you change something down here it changes everything forward it's pretty powerful software but you lose the ability to do that if you break it up like this so that's part of the reason none of my um parts fit each other right now because when I change, if I change them downstream, it doesn't change them upstream. Um, so anyway, um, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be building um, the forearm, the hand, and then after the forearm and the hand, we're gonna have the hip that comes out with the rotational part like that, and that will essentially be exact copy of this. This, this joint right here, 
this joint right here. So we switch over to the shoulder. So that'd be your, so there would be your frontal plane on your shoulder. The shoulder, this would be your um, sagittal plane. This right here is the um, transverse plane. That part right there is that part right there. And then that goes into your transverse plane. So you're gonna have the same thing on the hip. We're going to have a frontal plane, a sagittal plane, a transverse plane, and then it's going to come down the leg here, and then there would be your knee joint right there. Um, and then your rotation, internal and external rotation of the leg will be up there. And then there'll be another, um, and this is the same way I'm doing on the hand. These are gonna be full rings. And if you actually, what's kind of cool about that, what I like about it, if you look at really old pictures of Iron Man, he has full rings. He has these rings on his arms and his legs. So if you look here, this is like a really old school picture of Iron Man. You see how he has these rings? right here and here, and then he also got these round parts here. Uh, I had actually done a, a ring like this on one of my older um, suits, but uh, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I'm not trying to make it a, a entirely like this by any means, you know, but uh, I think this is a nice little nod to an, uh, the older suit. So by having um, a full ring, if we look over here, if we look over here at this uh, old exoskeleton, this is what I'm talking about, this is the ring. So this is the hands. Uh, forearm, um, muscles go through there. These are supposed to be tendons. Um, but this is that, that joint that I'm going to be making next, right there. So that ring will give it a very symmetrical, rounded shape, which will um, look like kind of like that old art. So that'll be on the hands. Um, and so that'll be on the forearm and here at the uh, calf. And then um, so those, so we got the uh, hip joint. This is still for draft one, hip joint, leg, uh, shank, which is called your shank. So hip joint, leg, shank, and then the foot. Um, and I'll do the probably the ankle joints and the foot joints and the shoe all as one part. Um, and then after that, after that, we're done with draft one, and then I get to rebuild it. Um, like I said, hopefully I'm going to try probably. Uh, to do the torso all in one run and do Fusion 360 could crap out on me. That could be too many parts. That's the other problem. It's better if you know what you're doing. It, it can handle more complicated parts and movements and joints if you don't fuck everything up trying to get there. So if you kind of know what you're doing, you can kind of get away with doing more complicated shit in Fusion 360. If you're trying to mud, muddle your, your way through it, it doesn't work that well. Um, so... That's why on the first draft I'm do I'm breaking it up into different files to, for, so I'm just I'm working it out and thinking it through, but then on the second draft I'm gonna try to um, not do that. Um, I'm not gonna do it all as one because I think that's excessive. But I'll do the torso. I mean the head, the torso, the pelvis, um, then your lumbar, your neck, um, and then there'll be spots a spot in the back where the clavic sternoclavicular joint is and then um, the side part or the uh, sagittal plane of the hip joint that'll all be done and then I'll switch and I'll go work out from the uh, sternoclavicular joint out down the arm and then from the hip joint down the leg so um, so that's the plan uh, so yeah I have to finish those files on the uh, the draft one I think that the draft two is going to go faster, except I really kind of fucked up. I really don't have anything. I don't have a lot of good stuff from draft one of the torso, uh, any of the torso, because I didn't decide to start making the, the superficial and deep frame, that separate du dual exoskeleton kind of design, um, until I started the arms. Uh, it's probably why the arms have taken me so much longer to do, um, because it is way more complicated, but it makes it way stronger. Um, Let's talk about something real quick too. So the reason that this is that I'm doing this double exoskeleton design is that I started off with um, one. This would be like just the deep exoskeleton that I was initially making, and then you had your points coming off here, and then if you put your exo muscle in between it like this, this produces about five tons of force um, this way, and uh, that would just shear most any metal. The only way not to do it is like to use composites, uh, which we may still end up using on some of the, if, if we make a suit that's really strong, um, it still might have composites on it, but it's because it's bent. Um, if you, it puts a bending force on this instead of comp a compressive force. And um, so if you do this, bending, if we do this and we bolt here and here and then have this, 
Um, then when you put your muscle in there, and it'll be pulling kind of like this still, because they'll all be in here, remember, in the deep part of the frame. Then when it pulls, it's supported on both sides, and you have a compressive force and not a bending force, and that is a lot stronger. It'll also be able to take impacts and stuff better because the outside part that would get put on is essentially just gonna be there to protect everything. So that part can be built in a way that be, it, it can be um, um, protecting. Um, my ultimate goal is to make this thing bulletproof at some point because I am trying to be Iron Man. Um, so I, this will be either a composite or like a really strong titanium or something like that um, on the outside that would be bulletproof. Um, titanium would be pretty cool because it would actually be metal. Um, you could do composites too, but I think we'll do that. Um, and it's funny enough, I had done a lot of simulations on um, when I designed this one. And that's the reason that this is slotted right here. Um, and you can see, look at that. There's actually almost a um, deep and superficial joint here. I kind of forgot about the way I put this together. The, the only difference would be that there would be a bolt right there. So this has essentially got um, this part, just this part, as essentially has the um, deep superficial thing going on here anyway. You can tell over here that I didn't do that uh, because I was literally, I designed this just for one muscle. The idea was to build this. I was gonna build a, a mock of, of the suit where it was just gonna lift. Um, so I was just gonna put one muscle in there and then be able to curl really strong. Um, I like that idea, but I think it's more impressive to do what I'm doing now with the non-powered one um, that is fully movable, um, but not powered, um, instead of having a partial like upper body exoskeleton-esque thing that could only lift from one thing. Um, maybe I'll take a page out of this book and what I was trying to do with it uh, by um, um, maybe just powering up part of it to begin with. That's actually not a bad idea. So maybe if I do power this, maybe I won't start by trying to power the entire suit, just start by trying to power parts of it so I can do some more cool shit with it. I don't know. Uh, but you can see over here, this doesn't have a, um, a deep or superficial frame. This was one of the initial attempts at these sliding joints in here that I'm working on now, the transverse plane um, of the uh, shoulder, which is actually just what I was just working on. So, um, so yeah, there's a little bit of the history of how um, some of that works um, and then where I'm going with it. Uh, finally got the arm done took forever. Um, it felt like because I was out of town and stuff, but, uh, starting on the forearm, um, I have some video to edit, uh, but I might end up, um, I don't know. I might end up working a little bit more tonight. I'm still really tired. I haven't completely caught back up from uh, Snowboys, but, um, I'm almost back. <laughs> so let's get the forearm done and then the hand, and then we can finally move to the lower body, which will be super exciting because I've never done that before. Um, if you watch through all this explanation, good for you. It's a lot of in the weed stuff, and I know that it would make a lot more sense if you could just see it, and you will see it. You will. And if you're watching now, like and subscribe because you are going to see some awesome, awesome shit.